in today's video, we will be looking at the finite element analysis of one dimensional heat transfer occurring through a composite slat. We will first look at the problem definition, which includes the problem description. We will then look at the analytical method to solve the problem using the heat transfer approach and the finite element approach. This will be followed by the ANSYS steady state thermal analysis and be concluded by comparing the results achieved by all the three methods, a composite slab having height of 60 millimeter and width of 40 millimeter is made up of four different materials. The necessary thermal conductivities and the heat transfer coefficients are mentioned along with relevant cross-sectional areas. We must find out the temperatures at interfaces and the uh, total heat transferred through the slab. By fundamentals of heat transfer, we know that the total heat transfer is equal to the ratio of the temperature difference and the total resist offered during the heat transfer. The problem can be split based on the mode of heat transfer as shown in the figure. The resistance faced by each element is dependent upon its properties. The resistance to heat transfer is different for conduction and convection. Thus, by knowing the mode of heat transfer, we can easily find out the resistance as shown. This in turn can be used to find out the total heat transfer. Hence, by knowing the total heat transfer and manipulating its formula, and accounting for appropriate resistance, we can find out the temperatures at interfaces. The elemental FEA matrix is as shown in which K is the stiffness. The stiffness is the reciprocal of the resistance, which differs depending upon the mode of heat transfer. Thus, by splitting the problem based on the mode of heat transfer, we can find out all the elemental matrices. We form the global matrix by combining all the elemental matrices. After applying the appropriate boundary conditions, we can solve the global matrix and convert it into a system of linear equations. By solving these equations, we can find out all the unknown interface temperatures as well as the total heat transfer. Now we will look at the ANSYS workbench for the simulation. First, drag and drop the steady state thermal module into the workbench. Go to engineering data and edit the material properties. As there are four different materials, we have to create and define each of these materials. There will be one material already present. Edit it as for the problem. Create a new material by double clicking right below the already present material and selecting isotropic thermal conductivity to define the thermal conductivity. Name the materials in such a way that it is easy to identify each material at the time of assignment. Perform these steps for all the materials. Now go to Design Modeler. Change the unit. We can create the geometry using two different methods. So for the first method, we will create the outline of each of the four bodies as shown using the appropriate dimensions.
then use the extrude tool with the geometry as the created sketch and set the extrusion depth as the body width. Do not forget to change the operation to add frozen. The second method is a bit more complex and more time consuming than the first method. Use the primitives option to be able to directly make a box representing a slab that will be able to contain all the smaller sections. Do not forget to change the operation to add frozen. Since we want four distinct solids, we need to slice the body at appropriate locations. This can be done by creating a plane at these locations. And using the slice tool to slice the desired body using the created plane, as shown. Care has to be taken of the plane orientation, location, and the body which it's going to slice. Form a new part and set the share topology option to automatic. Now we will go to ANSI's mechanical. We first need to assign the material to each of the smaller slabs. However, care has to be taken that the right material is assigned to the right solid. And this can be done by carefully observing uh, which solid is being highlighted and matching it with the appropriate material. After the material assignment is complete, generate a mesh of 2.5 millimeters with it uh, behavior as hard by using the body sizing option, selecting all the bodies and clicking on generate mesh. Apply the convection to the necessary faces by using the convection boundary condition tool and the necessary faces. Specify the heat transfer coefficient as the film coefficient and specify the ambient temperature. Please be mindful of the 
uh, units when applying the film coefficient. Do this for both faces. To determine the temperature, use the temperature tool and select the appropriate faces for the respective temperatures as shown. For finding out the total heat transfer, use the reaction probe with the specified convection as the boundary condition. Do the same for the other applied convection. Click on Solve. Thus, we have all the results we are looking for. All the results are tabulated as shown. The results of the FEA matrix method and ANSYS are matching the analytical method with good accuracy. The following are the references that you can use for further reading. Do you think lateral heat transfer will occur between the parallel slabs? What will be the most realistic and practical? Do let us know in the comments. That's all for today's video. For any doubts and suggestions, please do comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and we'll meet in the next video.